Alexander Martinez, A L E X A N D E R M A R T I N E Z. Uh, good uh, morning, sir. Can you please state your name and occupation? Yes, good morning. It's uh, Alexander Martinez. I'm a detective <coughs> trooper for the Michigan State Police. And how long have you been working for the Michigan State Police? Uh, eight years. And where are you currently assigned within the Michigan State Police uh, Department? Uh, I'm assigned to the Homicide Task Force. All right, and as part of that um, assignment that you're uh, currently assigned to, uh, were you involved in the investigation into the death of Samantha Wool? back in October of 2023? Yes. And at that time, uh, did you have an occasion to go to 1366 Juliet Place um, on October 21st of 2023? Yes, I did. And how did you come to go to that location? Um, I had made the location to um, look over the scene, walk through the house, um, look at the evidence that was there, the blood, um, we were working with the lab at that time. So um, there had already been other police personnel there by the time you got there? Uh, on the 21st, yes, there had been police there prior to me. And so did you go into the area, the interior of 1366 Juliet? Yes. And when you went inside, did you go uh, just on one floor or did you go throughout the entire townhouse? I went through the entire townhouse. And what was your purpose in walking through the entire townhouse? Uh, just to familiarize, familiarize myself with the scene, um, take a look at the investigation um, where it began. All right, and uh, besides yourself, were there other members, other members of the task force who were also with you going throughout the interior of the townhouse? Yes. Now, you mentioned familiarizing your, yourself with the scene. Does that include uh, looking for potential items of evidence that might be relevant? Yes. Okay. Now, is uh, areas where suspected blood is present, is that relevant to you when you're investigating a crime scene? Yes, it is. All right. So when you went through the interior of that house, were you looking at all for areas of suspected blood? Yes. All right. So just talking specifically about the basement, did you go down to the basement area of 1366? I did. And did you notice anything, uh, particularly with regard to suspected blood, uh, once you got down on the basement level? Uh, I did not notice any, anything like that in the basement, correct. All right, so in, in other parts of the, the townhouse, did you see areas with suspected blood? Yes. And, and like generally speaking, where did you see that? Uh, the main floor, the hallway near the uh, front entrance, and uh, the living room. All right, but uh, those areas with suspected blood that you've referred to, I mean, did you see anything like that down in the basement? Uh, I did not. Uh, if you had seen suspected blood, would you have made note of that? Yes, and I would have brought it to the attention of the other investigators. Was there, did you have any reason or motivation to not report items, potential items of relevant evidence in the basement? Uh, no, that, I wouldn't do that. If there was something relevant, it would be known. Okay. Now, um, aside from the interior of their house, did you also... Uh, take note of anything uh, in the exterior of the, of the townhouse area, particularly the parking lot area that was nearby? Yes. Um, there was a vehicle in the parking lot that my attention was brought to. All right. And, and what specifically about a vehicle in the parking lot got your attention? Uh, there was a vehicle that had flat tires, um, and it appeared that the tires had been either slashed or struck with a knife. And why was that relevant to you? Uh, well, we're investigating a homicide that's related to a stabbing. So in, in the same parking lot or near the residence uh, where the victim resided, there was a vehicle that had apparent slash marks in the tires. All right, so you had a chance to actually get up close to the tires and look at these apparent still slash marks in the tires themselves? Yes. May I approach her? You may. So I'm showing you a set of <coughs> photographs um, that have been marked as People's Proposed Exhibit 82. If you could look through them, let me know whether you recognize any of the objects that are depicted in those photographs. Mm. 
Yes, I recognize these. And what do they appear to be? Uh, they they appear to be the tires that I photographed with the apparent uh, slash marks in the in the tires. All right, and do those photographs appear to be a fair and accurate representation of the conditions of the tires as you saw them on the 21st of October? Yes. People would move to admit PPs for post at uh, 82. No objection. Pieces 82 will be admitted. Now, uh, this is uh, the first page of People's Exhibit 82. Can you just describe what we're looking at here? Uh, yes, there's, uh, these are two tires um, that are set on the ground. They've been taken off the vehicle and um, just laying them out to get an overall look at them. This is outside in the parking lot uh, near 1366 Joliet. All right. All right, now looking at slide number two, what's meant to be depicted here? If this is just a, a close, closer photo of one of the tires. And slide number three. And this is uh, even closer now on one of the tires with the uh, apparent slash marks. And um, you have a pointer behind you. Could you just perhaps indicate to the jurors where the suspected uh, slash marks are in the tire? Uh, yes. Uh, right about here. And then uh, these marks as well. This is now slide number four. Um, do you see any relevant uh, items of interest in this photograph? Uh, yes. Uh, again, up here, right here, and then these marks as well. And this is slide number five. What's this photograph of? Oh, this is going to be uh, another tire, um, just an overall photo of it. All right. And slide number six. Uh, were there any, is there a reason you took this photograph? Uh, yes, it's a closer photo of the same tire, um, just to show the other slash marks on the second tire. All right. And uh, is this a close-up of that same tire? Yes, it is. And can you just indicate where the suspected slash marks in the tire are? Yes. Right here, 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 and here. So that's a total of five suspected uh, cuts into this tire? Yes. So uh, now we're showing Exhibit 3 that's already been admitted. <laughs> and uh, uh, Do you recognize any of the items that are uh, depicted in this uh, image that we're showing you here? Yes, I do. A and what does it depict? Uh, this depicts the, uh, the neighborhood or the general area where this crime scene is located. Um, with the, the blue box with 1366, that is the uh, location of the victim's townhouse. All right, in this general overview that um, you're looking at here, did, is that how it appeared to you when you were physically present in that area back on October 21st? Yes, it does. All right, so can you indicate at all uh, on this overhead view where the vehicle was with the uh, tires that had been sludged? Uh, yes, it, uh, th that vehicle was parked approximately in this location, um, just outside of the main parking lot for uh, 1366. And so the, the area you pointed to, that is directly west of where the Chrysler School is um, noted on the map? That's correct. Okay. So now uh, we're going to pull up Exhibit 8. It's already been admitted. Uh, and we're specifically, we're stopped here at 22 minutes and 18 seconds. Um, now, from this uh, still image, do you see the vehicle uh, that had the, the tires that had been damaged? Yes, I do. Could you also point to the jurors where that vehicle is here? Uh, it is this white SUV here. It's a Mercedes SUV. And so uh, the cursor now, we have not played the video, but we're, we're fast forwarding in time. Can you see any movement 
in that vehicle as time is passing. Yes, it appears there's some movement. Uh, and, and can you just describe the movement that you see there? It just looks like a up and down motion. Okay. Um, so the car appears to be going from an oh, uh, elevated position to a lower position. Uh, yes. All right, and it's not as if the vehicle is being operated by anyone at this time. So no, it, it appears not. Okay. And uh, what we're seeing here, where it appears to be a parking lot, is that the same parking lot that you just referred to in the uh, to the jurors? Yes, that's correct. So, um, after you were present on the, the 21st of October, did you continue to remain uh, involved in the investigation of, um, of the case? Yes, I did. And as part of your job uh, responsibilities, did you author several search warrants for phone records? Yes. All right. And what was your purpose in obtaining search warrants from phone records from various individuals? Uh, it's to assist in um, identifying different locations uh, that individuals' devices uh, had been previously, uh, looking for historical records. Um, we can look for pings to find current locations. Uh, it's just to cover all of our bases uh, for the investigation. Now, do you yourself analyze those phone records and interpret what the data shows in the phone records that you received? Mm -mm. I personally did not do that for this uh, incident. Okay. Um, was it forwarded to somebody else that you were working with who did that analysis? Yes. All right. And um, did you obtain phone records in this case for uh, a phone number associated with Samantha Wool? Uh, yes. Um, did you also obtain phone records for a number of individuals by the names of Robert Becker, Jeffrey Herbstman, Aaron Pergament, Benjamin Safran, Josh Goldberg, David Wilkinson? Yes. All right. And um, did you also, in this case, um, obtain phone records uh, for an international mobile, mobile subscriber identity of 310-2600-699-10170? Yes. All right. So all these phone records, you mentioned that you gave them to somebody else? That's correct. And what was that person's name? Uh, that's uh, Special Agent Brian Toltsitz with the FBI. All right. Now, um, on November 8th of, of 2023, uh, did you have an occasion to go to 603 West Brand Boulevard uh, in the city of Detroit? Yes, I did. And what was your purpose for being there on that day? Uh, my purpose was to be present for the execution of a search warrant uh, at that residence of 603 uh, West Grand. Uh, was, the purpose was to look for evidence and process the house. All right. And so as part of your investigation, uh, when you were physically present, did you notice any cameras that may have been mounted on the exterior of that home? Yes, I did. And so uh, did you have any involvement with those cameras while you were uh, executing the search warrant? Yes, sir. And, and what was your involvement with those? Um, I removed the front camera from the front of the residence. And, and why did you do that? Um, just standard at search warrants is something that I do. Take it down uh, to remove it, uh, prevent it from recording any of our conversations about the investigation, um, and take it down as well as our safety or so other people aren't watching what we're doing. Okay. And um, Within your job as a police officer, uh, do you occasionally wear a body camera? Yes. And are you familiar with other police officers who wear body cameras? Yes, I am. And do you have the ability to review uh, body camera footage from other police officers? Yes. Now, in this case, um, did you review some body camera footage uh, that was taken back on November 8th of 2023? Yes, I did. And did you see yourself on any of the body camera footage that you reviewed? Yes, sir. And the footage that reviewed, was it a fair and accurate representation of the things that you personally experienced um, or were present for over the course of the execution of that search warrant? Yes. Your Honor, at this point, I move to admit people's proposed about uh, 120.
this clip, what was that uh, depicting? Uh, that's depicting the approach to the uh, residence for the search warrant. All right. And were you present in that video? Yes, I was. Now, at the time before you entered, did you know if anyone was inside the residence? Uh, it was at, my, at the time, it was my understanding that nobody was going to be there. Okay. So what we heard with the loudspeaker, that's just, is that standard procedure? Yes, the, uh, the lights and uh, the speaker to announce our presence. And uh, for the record, I'm going to now publish the second clip on uh, Exhibit 100. We can just take it down. So um, the two clips that we just saw, what, uh, what did you observe on those clips? Uh, the removal of the exterior cameras on the house. Uh, I would object that that's a mischaracterization of clip number three. There was not a removal. There was an acknowledgment of the camera in the rear of the house, but not a removal. Hmm. The jury can draw their own conclusions. That's really argument. Um, so um, now fast forwarding that was on November 8th so now I want to go uh, fast forward to November 30th of 2023 um, did something happen on that day that uh, was part of your investigation into the death of Samantha Wolf yes all right and did you uh, on that day uh, go to the area of Utica Road and 13 Mile Road um, that day Yes. And what was your purpose going there? I was a part of and assisted in a mobile surveillance operation of the suspects. All right. So you mentioned a suspect. Yes. Um, now, this person that you were engaging in mobile surveillance with, do you see that person in court today? I do. Do you point to that person and describe what they're wearing? Yes. To my right, it's a brown suit and blue tie. For the record, the witness has identified the defendant. I guess... How many people are standing where you pointed, or sitting where you pointed? I apologize. Uh, he's the person in the middle uh, of the three people to my right. At the table to your right. Yes. For the record, I move. Uh, I'd note that the defendant. I sorry, the witness identified the defendant, Michael Jackson Bolanos. So noted for the record. Um, so, generally speaking, back on November 30th, what led you to the point where you were doing mo mobile surveillance on the defendant? I'm, I'm sorry, you said what led us to that? Yes. Um, it was a process of going through evidence, a uh, process of going through phone records, a uh, process of reviewing and collecting and watching uh, video throughout the area near where the crime scene was, and uh, just a whole collection of all the evidence and what brought us there. All right, now you mentioned some video that was reviewed. Did you ever personally review any relevant video evidence? It, I did. And in particular, did you ever review any video uh, that had been obtained from the Chrysler Elementary School? Yes, I did. And uh, was that video from the overnight hours from October 20th to October 21st? Yes. And did you personally make any observations while you watched that video that got your attention? Yes. Just describe what you saw. I was reviewing uh, the camera that faces to the west um, from the Chrysler Elementary School. Uh, I had a view of Lafayette and I had a view of Joliet. I, I was reviewing the camera view from uh, Lafayette and I observed uh, what appeared to be an individual or a person 
uh, walking across Lafayette towards where the crime scene is. Um, also towards the parking lot of where that vehicle had the apparent slash tires. Um, this person temporarily went out of view as the area has trees. Um, I continued to watch the Joliet view, um, which captures the parking lot outside of the victim's uh, townhouse. Uh, what appeared to me is the same person that I previously saw walking on Lafayette entering the parking lot. Uh, that individual um, was observed on camera in the area for a little bit of time. Um, I continued to observe that individual. Uh, what I believe is the individual pulling on a door handle in the parking lot uh, where the victim's townhouse is at. It looked like entry was gained inside and possibly a bag was being carried at some point after. Um, so if I can just stop you here, this person yes. that you saw, at least when you first saw them on the video, did you know who that person was? No, I did not know the person on the video. Okay, so um, this person got your attention. Uh, why did he get your attention specifically? <clears throat> uh, I was watching hours of video and there was not many people walking around in the area at that time. So it was a person walking towards the crime scene and that's what got my attention. And so, um, obviously, well, not obviously, but did you report this to other police officers? Yes, I did. And um, uh, was there an effort to obtain more and more surveillance video from around the surrounding areas? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, did you personally pull every video clip from every building throughout town, or did other police officers uh, work on that project as well? It was a collaborative effort. Uh, there's numerous police officers that helped with that. <coughs> All right. So uh, to go back now to November 30th of 2023, when you say you're doing mobile surveillance, like what exactly does that mean? What are you doing? Uh, myself and several other detectives are in our unmarked police vehicles. Uh, we were following and observing and communicating with each other of uh, the suspect that we are following. All right, now this person uh, that you've identified as the defendant, yes. uh, when you were following him, are you, you said you were in a car. Yes, I was. So was the defendant in a car? Yes. And can you describe what kind of car he was in? Uh, it was a uh, older black Dodge Charger. The license plate was uh, ESU, I believe it was 5393. All right. And um, were you able to personally observe the defendant driving that vehicle? Yes. All right, so describe what happened as you're engaging in surveillance on the vehicle. Uh, we monitored that vehicle and the defendant. We followed him, uh, and then we had a uh, uniform and marked Michigan State Police uh, Sergeant conduct a traffic stop and uh, make contact. Now, why, why would you have a, a uniformed uh, police officer make a make a stop as opposed to you in the surveillance vehicle uh, the police presence and authority of a uniformed officer to make the stop and they have actual lights to conduct that traffic stop all right and so uh, do you know if the lights or sirens were used in order to get the defendant's vehicle to pull over yes all right and um, did you get out of your car once the vehicle was pulled over eventually yes all right, and did you make any observations of, of the defendant uh, during this traffic stop? Yes. Just describe what you saw. Uh, I observed the uh, state police sergeant making contact with him, speaking with him. The defendant was standing in front of the sergeant's uh, patrol vehicle. Um, the sergeant ultimately uh, placed the defendant under arrest in handcuffs and transported him from that location. And do you know what was done with, with the vehicle that he was driving? Yes. So des describe what ha happened to that vehicle. So that vehicle remained there um, at the traffic stop location. Uh, a Detroit police sergeant responded and we placed another uniform car there to supervise that vehicle. Um, as well as myself, I sat in the area with that vehicle um, and supervised it to make sure nobody entered it or removed anything from the vehicle. All right. So. As you're there observing the vehicle, did anyone put anything in the vehicle or take anything out of the vehicle? No, sir. Now, um, uh, did you ever see any cellular devices uh, 
in and around that vehicle when you were able to approach the vehicle? Yes. So describe what you saw. Uh, it was a red Apple iPhone. Uh, it was sitting on the driver's seat. Okay. Um, it was sitting on the driver's seat of the charger that you referred to? Yes, sir. All right. And when did you first see it there? Uh, as soon as I walked up to the vehicle um, and I observed it in plain view sitting on the seat. All right. And uh, about how long after you'd seen the defendant interact with the, uh, with the trooper who pulled him over did you have an occasion to go and actually look in the interior of the vehicle and see the phone? Yes, immediately after the defendant was transported away from the traffic stop, I approached and I observed it. Okay, and um, you said that a Detroit police officer came and did he actually help tow the car away? Yes, he did. And um, ultimately, uh, did you obtain a search warrant to look into the interior of that Dodge Charger? Yes, I did. And as part of that, um, search warrant, did you obtain the phone that was observed in the vehicle? Yes. Okay. And what was done with that phone? Uh, I immediately transported that cell phone to the Detroit Public Safety Headquarters, um, where it was turned over to Detective Sarah Markle for a forensic download. Okay. And I placed the item on evidence as item 155. All right. May I approach you? Amen. I'm showing you what's been marked as People's Proposed Exhibit uh, 39. I'm going to ask if you recognize any, the object I'm holding here. Yes, I do. And what is that? This is the Apple iPhone that I seized from that traffic stop from that Dodge Charger. Okay. And you said you put that on an evidence uh, tag number? Yes. And what number was that? 155. So the envelope I'm holding, does that have an evidence t uh, tag number uh, printed on it? Yes, sir. And what's the number on this envelope? The evidence tag number is 155. People would move to admit people's proposed at uh, 39. No objection. People's moved to 9 is the vote. So you said that um, once you place it on evidence, it was forwarded to another police officer? That's correct. All right. So did you yourself personally uh, use a computer to look at any of the data contained within the cellular device? I did not. Any other questions, Jeremy? Yeah, thank you. Good morning, Detective Trooper. Hey, good morning, sir. Now, you indicated that you went over to 1366 Joliet Place in Detroit, correct? That's correct. And you went into the basement, and you, from your observation, you didn't see what appeared to be suspected blood, correct? That's correct. If I could direct your attention to People's Exhibit Number 10, slide 304. If you look right where my cursor is, um, well, above my cursor, yep. by the sink and the washing machine or dryer, um, were you able to identify that and observe that in person while you were at the sink? The mark on the floor? Yes, this, this mark. I see it in this photo. Yes. But It was not blood. Whatever that is, I did not observe or indicate okay. any. Okay. You said you're making a conclusion as of right now. My question I'm is... I'm just telling you, I didn't observe any blood. Okay. Did you observe this mark, whatever it is, on the floor at the location? I don't recall this mark at this moment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Did you ever look in the sink? I did. You did? Okay. Did you take any pictures from inside the sink? No, sir. Okay. Did the sink appear to be clean? 
There wasn't anything notable in my opinion. Okay. And you would agree that the, condi the outside condition of this sink looks rather clean, correct? Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Now, in relation to exhibit number eight, which you were shown, uh, which were some slash tires from an automobile, correct? Yes, sir. And you were also shown a video clip of, I guess, some responding officers, their dash cam, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you know approximately when the time of that would have been when those officers arrived on the scene? Uh, not at this moment, no. Okay. But from your opinion, it seemed like this particular automobile was, I guess, going down, the tires being deflated during the duration of that video footage? Uh, I'm not saying they were being deflated at that moment, but on the video it clearly looked like the vehicle was elevated and going lower. There's clearly some motion in the video. Okay. Were you able to examine the tires personally? Yes, I did. Okay. Were you able to, I guess, get an estimate of what the depth of the incisions on the tires were? No, I did not. Okay. Did you ever send that off to get analyzed? Uh, there was actually a lab professional on scene. I inquired with him about the evidentiary value of seizing the tires, and he advised me that there was none. So the tires were not seized. They were just photographed. Okay. And based upon the incision from your expert, did you ever reach any understanding of approximately how long ago those incisions could have been made? Uh, I'm sorry, can you please ask me that question again? When, when speaking <coughs> with, you said you had an expert on the scene, correct? Yes. Okay, when speaking well, with... You, professional, a lab prof professional. Okay, lab professional. When speaking with your lab professional colleague of yours, did you ever come to an understanding based upon the depth or perceived depth of those incisions approximately how long ago they could have been done? I didn't learn from that lab professional, but I learned from the owners of that vehicle. Okay, but you never learned from the owners of the vehicle an estimated time frame of when that could have happened to be still being depleted by the time that the arriving officers responded to the scene, correct? If I remember correctly speaking to them, they parked the vehicle at that location, the <laughs> tires were inflated, and when they came out the next day, the tires were deflated. Okay. So just to be clear, you couldn't give an estimate of what, when in the night you could assume or estimate that this could have happened, correct? No, sir, I don't know. Okay. Now, you also indicated that you went to 603 West Grand, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you indicated that clip number three in exhibit 120, from your observation, you stated that it depicted the removal of the rear camera? Yes, it did, oh. especially when you relate it to the clip two. It's the same two people, just different views. Okay. But you would agree that the pit that you saw, the clip number three, didn't actually depict the cameras being removed. You would agree in, to that, correct? In a reasonable view of the video, I believe that the camera was removed, especially when you reference it from video number two. Okay. Now, did you have an ob uh, opportunity to review or the base, I mean, the garage of this location? The of garage? Six, yes, the garage. Yes. Okay. And did you notice a bike inside the garage? Yes, I did. Okay. Was that bicycle ever seized for possibly any evidentiary value? I don't believe it was seized. Okay. Was the bike analyzed to see if it was possibly used recently? No, I'm not sure how you could tell if a bike was used recently anyways. Okay, did you, did you analyze the tires to see if the tires had possibly dirt on there that could have been new? I didn't analyze the bike by any means other than physically looking at it myself. Okay. Did you look at the tires? I looked at the overall of the bike, so okay. the tires would be part of it. Okay, did you take any photographs of that? No, sir, I was not the evidence tech okay. for the search warrant. During this time frame, were you the officer in charge? No, sir. Okay. But you did request multiple search warrants, correct? I authored numerous search warrants, yes. Okay. 
And as part of one of the search warrants, you requested the infotainment system from Jeff Herf Herbsman's Volkswagen, correct? That's correct. Okay. And the reason why you requested that infotainment system because it had a GPS navigation in there, correct? That's from my understanding, yes. Okay. Yeah. And it was, your, it was your reasoning that that particular infotainment system could have evidentiary value as to where this car could have recently been, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you ever get a download of this particular infotainment system? I authored the search warrant and I forwarded it to the correct people that are responsible for that. That is not my uh, position and I don't have the training to extract that. Okay. But as part of your role in this investigation, it never came to your attention that there was any, I guess, download of this infotainment system from this Volkswagen, correct? Uh, Sir, I'm not familiar if it was done or not. I just but, authored the search warrant. So, so to be clear, it never came into your your mind bank that this particular infotainment system was downloaded and information was extracted from it, as far as you know, correct? As far as I know. Okay, fair enough. You also requested a search warrant for Jeff Hersman's phone number or his cell phone, correct? Yes. Okay. Were you aware that Jeff Hirschman had a Google Voice telephone number? No. Okay, so it would be fair to say that you never authored uh, or requested a search warrant of a Google Voice phone number that was associated with Jeff Hirschman, correct? Correct. Okay. You also requested a search warrant for an uh, Aaron Pergamon, correct? Yes. Okay. And when you requested this search warrant, you felt personally that Aaron Pergament was being deceitful when he spoke to Officer Crenshaw, correct? Objection. It's objection. You can see how you feel. That's not in evidence. I'm asking about a search warrant. You can see how you feel. There could be various reasons why he gets a search warrant, but the fact that he may have been felt he was deceitful is... The fact that he made what? His personal opinion about whether he was deceitful, there's no facts and evidence to support that. In your search warrant, you stated that you felt this particular way, didn't you? Sir, my search warrants, it says they're based on a collection of evidence from other investigators and my personal experience. So if an investigator expressed to me that he thought he may have been being untruthful or however you described it, then it's a documentation of all the investigators and myself. Okay. And, and my it, personal experience with him is not there. Okay. And it was based upon your understanding and your review of the evidence that Aaron Pergman had a key to Samantha Wall's residence. Isn't that correct? Yes. Okay. And based upon your knowledge of the case and your understanding, Aaron Pergman was being deceitful when asked about that key to Samantha Wall's house by Officer Crenshaw, correct? Yes. Okay. And a matter of fact, you reviewed several text messages that were going back and forth between Aaron Pergament and Samantha Wall about Aaron Pergament possessing that key, correct? I, I don't remember if it was me exactly, if that's the words in my search warrant or if it was from someone else, but okay. yes, the, the text conversation is there. Okay, and based upon that conversation, there was you were understanding that Aaron Pergament, at least one time, if not others, was coming over to Samantha Wall's house and said, hey, I have a key, correct? Yes. Okay. And it was also your understanding, based upon your knowledge of this case, that that particular key was never returned back to Samantha Wall, correct? Yes. Okay. And you also stated, and you felt in your search warrant, that based upon your knowledge of crimes and investigations, you stated that some suspects leave their cellular devices at home 
when they go out to commit a crime. You stated that, didn't you? That is a possibility, yes. You said that's a possibility? Depends on the crime. I, I can't control what people do. But yes, it's possible somebody can do that. Okay, but you, in fact, when you requested a search warrant, you stated that particular phrase or those feelings in the affidavit, correct? Yes, I okay. stated that. Okay. And when you stated that, this was based upon your previous knowledge of investigations, correct? Yes. And you felt that that particular information was pertinent in this particular case, didn't you? All avenues and aspects for the case are important. So, yes, oh. for this certain okay. circumstance, that's listed in there, yes. Okay. You didn't list every single possibility in this in the search warrant, did you? Not every possibility, okay. just okay. what we had at the time. Okay. And when you request a search warrant, you try to have it as narrowly tailored as possible so it can be specific to whoever's authorizing the search warrant, correct? You don't just say anything that doesn't pertain to the case, correct? Yeah, the, the contents of the search warrant pertain to the case. Okay. And based upon your knowledge of this case and what you thought, you thought that that could be at play in this case where individuals may have done the crime, but they left their cell phone at home to detect, to avoid detection of where their cell phone was, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now, when did your involvement in this case cease? My involvement began the, if I remember correctly, the day after the homicide occurred. Okay. W were you ever reassigned? I don't understand that question. No. Were you ever reassigned to that you're no longer investigating this case? Oh, excuse me. Did that was not okay. expressed to me by, no. Okay. But at some point in time, it was your understanding that Sergeant Stockmeyer then took over the case as far as authorizing warrants? Uh, no, sir. Um, oh, not authorizing warrants, but requesting warrants. I'm sorry. Detective Trooper Stockmeyer is the officer in charge of the case. Uh, while she was working with us. Um, I authored cert search warrants, and as well as I did other things for the investigation. Uh, but there's a moment in time where I was tied up on a task for the investigation. Somebody else can author a search warrant. I'm not the sole contributor, contributor of search warrants for the case. Okay, but you would agree that in this particular case, you, authorized, you requested the vast majority of search warrants in this case, correct? I did. Okay. Did you ever request any search warrants for Jeff Hurstman's bank records? Mm, I don't recall if I did. Okay. Did you check to see if possibly Jeff Hurstman had access to Mogul, which is the bike sharing um, application or bike, bike sharing service? Uh, I'm not sure about mobile. Mogul, There's, I'm sorry. No, no, I know what you're referring to. Okay. I'm just not sure if one was done for that. Okay. Were you aware at the time of the search warrant that Jeff Hurstman was an, an avid bike, 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 bicyclist? No, I don't believe so. Okay. Had you known that, would you have possibly taken photographs of his bicycle that was located in his garage? Sir, I was not the evidence tech at the search warrant, so I didn't take any photographs at all. Okay, but the, you would agree that the evidence techs don't have 100% discretion of what photos they take. You would agree to that, correct? Sure, they take some pictures okay. based on our direction. Okay, and was it your direction that was directing the evidence techs? at this particular location at 603 West Grand? Uh, no. Maybe, okay. at, maybe at some point inside. I can't tell you everywhere in the house where I asked them to take a picture. Okay. Uh, there's numerous investigators there. I did not ask for the bicycle. Okay. But you agree that you had the ability and the authority to direct that, of correct? Of course. Okay. Yes. All right. Fair enough.
Now, as far as your surveillance on my client, was there a tracker that was ever placed on his car? Yes, sir. Okay. And when he was eventually pulled over, he didn't try to flee or anything, did he? No, sir. Okay. And when he was eventually arrested, he didn't resist or obstruct as far as you know, correct? That's correct. Okay. Were you ever aware that after the death of Samantha Wall that Jeff Herzman had a bonfire at his residence? I don't recall knowing that fact. Okay. Did you ever locate a fire pit that was located at Jeff Herzman's residence? I remember there being some burnt leftovers of what appeared to be a fire. Okay. I can't describe if it was a pit or in the ground or... Okay. Was that particular area ever analyzed to see if it had any remains of clothing? Mm, not by me, no. Okay. No. Was that area ever analyzed to see if it had any fire accelerants? around a particular area, such as gasoline? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And you personally didn't instruct any evidence text to photograph this fire pit, correct? No, I okay. did not. Now, there were a lot of prescription medications that were located inside of this house on 603 West Grand, correct? Yes, sir. And there were also some pills that were in the Ziploc bag, correct? Yes. Okay. Were those ever seized and processed to, to figure out exactly what substance they were? No, sir. But there were some different containers, one being a mason jar and one being a Ziploc bag that had mushrooms in there? Yes. Okay, and with, from your observation, did these appear to be uh, psychedelic mushrooms? I believe they were. Okay. And you also saw multiple pictures inside of this residence, correct? Yes. And you would agree that there were multiple pictures in different locations of Jeff Herbsman in the picture with Samantha Wall, correct? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, then, there was a, also a knife that was recovered from this location, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know whether or not, if you know, this particular knife was, I guess, processed for hair samples? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. But you were aware that Samantha Wall was stabbed at least two times in, in her scalp, correct? I'm aware of that. Okay. Thank you, uh, Detective Trooper. No further questions. Thank you, sir. You were asked whether or not you ever uh, obtained a search warrant for, I guess, a bike sharing service for Jeffrey Herbstman? Yes. All right. Um, did you ever, regarding Jeffrey Herbstman, did you ever attempt, attempt to obtain a search warrant for Uber records belonging to Jeff Herbstman? Yes. Did you ever obtain, via search warrant, uh, Lyft records for Jeffrey Herbstman? Yes. Did you ever obtain, via search warrant, records from uh, the Lime Scooter business for Jeffrey Herbstman? Yes. Did you ever obtain a, the a search warrant records for Jeffrey Herbstman for the Bird Scooter ser uh, service? Yes.
Now, based on all those search warrants, uh, did you ever become aware of any evidence uh, through any of those search warrants related to Jeff Herbstman that connected him to the death of Samantha Wolf? No. I don't have any other questions here. No, no questions. Questions from the jury? Write it down, counsel approach. Standard police procedure to remove cameras or break cameras off a mount during the execution of a search warrant, like was shown in People's 120? Yes. Why is that? Uh, to remove the cameras from the residence to prevent um, persons of interest or suspects um, listening on police conversation, picking up on details of the investigation or anything like that or somebody watching us remotely from another location. Uh, does the white Mercedes SUV shown in the parking lot near 1366 Joliet have an air ride suspension, if you know? I do not know. Anything further? Not for me, Your Honor. One quick question. Uh, do you know whether or not these cameras had an internal storage device such as a memory card? Uh, Based on my training experience with Arlo cameras, I am familiar with them to be uh, cloud-based. Okay. No physical DVR box. Okay. And did you, did you request a search warrant for the Arlen cloud service? Uh, Officer Crenshaw did. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Anything further? Not for me. Any other questions from the jury? Okay. Thank you, sir. You may sit down. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.